when I started working in taste, and it was a lot of years ago, um, we knew a great deal about observational taste, from people cooking, paying attention to what they ate. We didn't know very much about the mechanisms. She was interested in how sensitive different people were to the same food. It's easy to do a basic test. If you're adventurous, you can put the whole thing in your mouth. If you want to take it a little slower, taste a little corner of the paper, and if you don't taste it, put a little bit more in. Her testing equipment is simple. A piece of paper soaked in a very bitter chemical. I don't really taste anything. Don't taste it. Very little. OK. Well, for some, it is. <laughs> That's very bitter. <laughs> This sort of test has shown over and over again that different people do have different reactions to the same taste. <laughs> Linda wanted to see if there was an anatomical reason for this. Her task was daunting. She had to take an extremely close look at thousands of tongues. Taste buds are buried in what are called fungiform papillae. They will stand out when you stain the surface, but you still have to count them. Counting papilla is not the most fun in the world, but the best thing to do is take a picture. And if you've got a picture, you can go back look at it, count, and that's what we did. And indeed, the group of people who were intensely sensitive actually had more fungiform papillae. Those with fewer tasted less. Five per six millimeters, it's that precise, and you're at the bottom of the scale. 60, and she has a new name for you. Super taster. People at the end with five are really having pastel experiences with taste and food. The people at the end with 60, taste and food are neon to them. They're extremely intense. Today, Linda's comparing the tongues of Jenny, who thinks she has a very strong sense of taste, with Derek, who thinks he hasn't. If Jenny is a super taster, she should be anatomically different. I look at this screen and I can tell right away, this is a super taster tongue. This is not. We see many, many more fungiform papilla here, many fewer here, larger here than these. And that's typical of these two groups. We already know that Jennifer tastes things more intensely than Derek, so I expected her tongue to show that she's a super taster, and it does. In fact, Around 15% of the people she studied are super tasters. But the question is whether how intensely you taste affects what you eat. You know, you might ask, is it better or worse to be a super taster? Well, the truth is it depends on what you're asking about. Super tasters are better off in some circumstances and worse off in others. A super taster is going to experience at least three times the burn from a chili pepper as another person. Smoking and drinking have rather unpleasant characteristics to super tasters, and they don't do as much of that. Bitter is going to be more intense, and bitter is something we don't like. So vegetables tend to be bitter. Super tasters don't eat as many vegetables. 